Christ. I'm singing down in my soul. In my sanctified soul. Down in my soul. Christ holy. Oh, put your hands together. Down in my soul. Christ.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a lily, my Lord, is in the valley. Found it to be bright as a morning star. the 
continue to turn to the rock which is hiding us and that's in you Christ Jesus. We thank you Lord God. We thank you Lord God for this opportunity to just say thank you. Thank we you, say Lord thank Jesus. you Lord thank God you. because Lord without you there is no hope but Lord because of you we have hope to face our now we have hope to face our future and we have hope because of you Lord God we say thank you. Lord God, we just magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you for our passion, First Lady. Lord God, we thank you for them being in our presence this morning. Lord God, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, if you did not touch them. Hallelujah. We thank you because you touched them, Lord God. Hallelujah. We celebrating you right now, Lord God. It's because of your grace and your mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we know, Lord God, that you gave him a word. Hallelujah for your people, Lord God. We your sheep that hears your voice. Lord God, our ears are open. Our eyes can see. Hallelujah. Ready to receive what this says the Lord. So, Lord, we just magnify you. We glorify you. Now with this offering, Lord God, we give it to you, Lord God, because we know that we're sowing on good ground. And it shall produce good fruit. That 30, that 60, that 100 fold. Lord God, we thank you for those that are tuning in. Hallelujah. They can download the app and see many op ways to give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we believing by faith, Lord God, that when we sow, Lord God, Lord God, that you're going to open up the window of heaven and pull us, out a, uh, uh, pull us out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. So, Lord, we say thank you right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.
But your power is within me. No giant can defeat me. Cause you Jesus the Christ. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. It's by your mercy. It's by your loving kindness that we are not consumed. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you for how you loved us even when we didn't love ourselves. Thank you for giving us your son, showing us, showing us what life is all about, Lord. Thank you for allowing him to go to that cross because he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were already healed. We said, thank you, Lord. But I thank you because he didn't stay on that cross. I thank you because he didn't stay in that grave. But early one morning, he got up and declared all power. And heaven and earth is in his hand. And one day, God, he sent back the Holy Spirit, empowered us to declare this gospel to the world. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your healing power, your restoration power. Restoring in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And oh, how he talked with me. Yo, bitch. 
Oh, come put those hands together. How many know the Lord knows who you are? Come on, bless him, bless him. Bless him. That song is just so precious to me. I Sometimes when you're going through, you just need to know that the Lord knows what you're, doing, what you're going through. But not only that he knows my name, but it's good to know I know who he is. Hallelujah. How many can be a witness this morning that you knew who the Lord is? He's your Alpha. He's your Omega. He's your beginning and your end. Your first and your last. We certainly honor the Lord today and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ and certainly to all the people of God and certainly to First Lady Dwight being back with us too, to Ella Brown, Lady Brown, to all our elders, ministers, your companions, to all our deacons, companions, everyone, your respective place in the name of the Lord. Come on, get the praise team another hand. Thank God for them. Amen. We're so grateful to the Lord. Yeah, we miss being with the saints. And uh, thank God for the saints who came up on last Sunday after service and bless us. And we're still being blessed. Amen. Amen. And uh, so, we're so we're just so grateful to see everyone. In the name of the Lord. I, I want to speak briefly this morning with you, if the Lord's will, as we re celebrate and remember, amen, the Lord's Supper. But I want you to be remindful, this is just in remembrance of Christ, but one day, I'm looking forward to that day when we meet have the supper in the kingdom forever. And so that's the day I look forward to. In John's gospel, chapter number six, I want to start reading around the 26th verse. This is after Jesus had fed the 5,000 and he had calmed the sea and went to the other side and came to Capernaum and the crowd was searching for him. And Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perish, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give unto you, for him has God the Father sealed. Then they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God. Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him in whom he has sent. And they said therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may, be, may see and believe thee? What does thy work? A father did eat manna in the desert and it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. 
I want to speak to you from this subject, the bread of life. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. The bread of life. Now, we all know that most of us can look at each other and tell us we love bread. We don't have to guess. Uh, but Jesus reminded them that they were seeking him not because of miracles, of his power, of his love. But they sought him because of the bread that he had given them in the wilderness. It's amazing how parallel that time is to our time. I've discovered that most people seek the Lord not because of the Lord, but what the Lord gives them. We have a tendency as fleshly beings sometimes to forget that we are born of the Spirit. And we really should be considering ourselves as spirit, as in the spirit and not in the flesh. And most of the times we cry and we pat it after materialistic things. And we base our relationship on God based on what we have instead of who we are and who he is. We must be careful that we don't labor our whole lives for things that won't last. We're living in a time that people will take your life over nothing. I've watched friendships fall out over nothing. People fighting for position and power. People arguing and who driving the best car, where you buy your clothes from. And if you don't wear a certain name brand, people have a tendency to try to isolate you from them. But I can remember when years ago, when my youngest son, he did not want a certain brand of clothes. But my wife would tell you, you know, I'm a bargain shopper. So I bought a shirt, I think, from Walmart. And one day I was looking for my shirt and I couldn't find it. I discovered that the thing that he did not want it, he was wearing. See, sometimes we get sidetracked thinking my clothes make me who I am. Material thing. Or I'm in a friendship with a particular individual. But I come to tell you, people go and come. Clothes get old. Cars wear out. But your relationship with Jesus should never lose its power. Because some relationship is like a Coca-Cola. It's good until it loses its fit. But your relationship with the Lord should never lose its fit. Jesus was teaching and they were arguing, they were questioning him about this bread, the source of life. And they wanted to know how could they work the work of God. Notice, they questioned him not because they just ate miracle bread 
feeding the 5,000. He just calmed the sea from the storm, and now they're questioning him. My question to the believer today, how much more God has to do before we believe him? How much more do the Lord have to reveal unto us before we recognize who he is? You remember when Philip asked Jesus to question, show us the Father, it suffice of us. He said, have I been so long time with you and yet you don't know me? I've been hanging out with you all the time, but you don't know me. They began to question him, how can we work this work of God? Because they wanted to impress, Not they didn't want the power to lift up God, they wanted the power to exalt themselves. And most people today, you got to be careful who you allow power. Because some folk can't handle power. Some folk can't handle, well let me break it down to you. Some folk can't handle being in charge. You ever been around folk who want to tell you what to do? But if you put them in charge, they'll mess up the world. Let me bring it home a little closer. I got a lot of young folk, too. You ever been on a team you want to tell the coach how to coach? Well, maybe that didn't bother some of y'all either, but some of these mothers know you're cooking and Kid come in, they want to tell you how to cook. Can't fry a good egg. <laughs> what, what am I saying? Oftentimes, we, we don't allow God to give us that direction. We don't seek him for who he is, but we seek him because of what he does. And they want to know how can we work the works of God. And Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. <clears throat> it's very unique. And then they changed the subject again because now they want to see signs and miracles. And after all the signs and miracles he had done, they still won't believe him. So that tells me no matter how much signs and miracles you do, there are some folk ain't going to believe you. It don't matter how much, how much you treat folk nice, you treat the folk. Some folk just long for the ride. And Jesus understood this. He understood that folk were gathering to him just because of what he could do for them. Or not because of who he was. But then he said, they began to change the subject. He said, Moses gave us manna from heaven. Jesus stopped him in the track and said, what Moses gave you was not manna from heaven. He didn't give you that heavenly bread. God, God fed you with quail and, 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 and some type of meal that you had to go out in the morning and the evening together. He only did it because you were murmuring and complaining. So even in our murmuring and complaining, God still provides. Sometimes in our struggle to walk with God, he still provides. He still provides because why? He's trying to bring us to the place where we understand that the necessity of life, the source is in him. To one of one songwriter said, in him we live, move, and have our being. It was Luke gospel that said he filled the hungry soul. He filled the hungry with good things. Hallelujah. And those who think they got it together, he sent them away empty. Song said, for he satisfied the longing soul. He can fill the hungry soul with his goodness. That's what God desired, that we will have a relationship with him. That we can see what Paul said, nothing shall separate me from his love. He is my source. He is my strength. He wants us to hunger for him the way we hunger for things. The way we hunger for materialistic things, he wants us to have that same hunger for his fresh oil. 
It's very unique because Matthew Gospel said, Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled hallelujah and sometimes when we think of righteousness we're thinking about you know the law and trying to, to, to you know to prove to folk how safe but no no what he's saying is I am the Lord righteousness when you hunger for me the way you hunger for things you find out I'll fill your emptiness so Jesus says unto the world but he that cometh to me, I will no wise cast him out. We pick and choose who we want to come. But the Bible said, whosoever believeth in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I want you to know God wants all men to be filled with him. If God was concerned about your background, he wouldn't have drawn you to him. We are the only one caught up in somebody's past. But Jesus said, when you come to me and I cleanse you, he said, your sins and iniquities I won't remember no more. We are the only one can bring up stuff 10 years ago and make it if it just happened. To satisfy some egotistical mindset. That we have to prove. One thing I've learned in this walk with God. You don't have to down somebody else to be exalted. If you learn how to walk with God. I promise you when the day comes. God know how to flip the script and lift you up to another level. Because he that humbled himself before me. He said I'll exalt you. Then he tells me he that has the son has life. If you don't have the son, you don't have life. So we must be born of God. That's why the scripture said he that's born of God has overcome the world. And what does it bring to overcome the world? Even our faith. And they were questioning him concerning this hunger they had. They were trying to fill it with power. They were trying to fill it with emptiness, things that would perish. Isn't it strange that we give great honor to things that only last for a moment? Isn't it strange? Even Job found that out. He said, naked came I into the world, naked shall I return. I found out I was the richest man and I went from being the richest to the poorest. But when I got to be poor, I found out how rich I really was. Because I found out I had a rich relationship with God. And I found out that God did not build a relationship with me through material. He built it through his spirit. And the Bible says, Jesus began to question them. And they began, he says, if you eat up my body and you drink up my blood, you have no part with me. If you don't eat this bread, you don't have no. And they were thinking calamity. They were thinking eating flesh. But Jesus was trying to get them. I'm talking about my doctoring. I'm talking about my teaching. I'm talking about my word. He said, except you eat my word, you don't have no part with me. It's not enough to quote it. We got to consume it. And once you consume it, it becomes a part of you. Remember the parable he gives of the, the leaven. He said the kingdom of heaven is just like a little leaven. Woman put in a little meal and it, it makes the whole lump. It just, everything. He said that's how the kingdom is. The kingdom is. And even though we use the scripture, use leaven as, as, as negative in the scripture. But notice how God takes the negative and flips it into positive. So you got to understand that what he's saying to us is that sometimes leaven, you can put a little leaven in something and it explodes everything that it puts into. Why? Because it's the power. He's, he's trying to show us the power of the word of God, the power of his kingdom. It may start out small, but if you let me get in, I'll explode you. I'll get you to grow. I'll get you. To, I'll get your faith level to rise up. I, you'll find out that no weapon formed against you really won't prosper. You'll find out because I'm the bread of life. I'm your source. 
of other times, he'd tell them he's the door. He's the good shepherd. He said, I'm the light of the world. Hallelujah. He said, listen, you, you can't come except the Father draw you. Isn't it unique that many of us are trying to run away and he's trying to draw us? Many men are trying to run away from the goodness of God and you allow, we're allowing the world to dictate to us how we worship. We're allowing the world to dictate how we give God glory. We're allowing the world to dictate how we approve of our God. But baby, let me, my brothers and my sisters, let me change my language a little bit. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to understand when you in love with God. Hallelujah. When you in love, can I, can, I, can, I, can I go that route for sidebar for a moment? Because when you really in love, anybody can't tell you anything about your lover. Uh, uh, come on here, come on here. Uh, now see, if, if somebody really can say anything about your lover, you're really not in love. But when you're really in love with him, you don't have to hear the hearsays because you know him for yourself. And when you have a relationship with him, you can say like David said, not only he's my bread, as Jesus said he was, but David said in the Old Testament, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? Won't. He maketh me. Because there are times he got to make me lie down. Because there's a time he got to make me be quiet. There's a time he got to make my mouth be closed. Because sometimes I talk myself out of what he's trying to do. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Then he, he leaded me beside still waters. Because if it's up to me, the still waters don't look like where I need to cross. Because some of us, we like turbulence we ain't satisfied until we got stuff going on hallelujah we don't know what it is to sit and be quiet and hear the stillness of God we don't know what it is to be still and to know that I'm God we don't know what it is to be still and let the Lord hallelujah work it out according to his plan his purpose because you got to understand that when you come to God you, not only he's your bread but you've been bought with a price you're not your own you belong to the Lord so David reminds us he leads us beside still waters and then why because it's in the stillness where you get restored he said, he restoreth my soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. But most, of, most people today don't want your soul restored. You want your flesh restored. Why do you think they got so many gyms? You turn on the internet, exercise. Trainers everywhere. It's geared towards your flesh. I'm not saying anything wrong with it. What I'm saying is don't let that replace your relationship with Christ. If you hunger, if you hunger for the natural, he said, I need that same hunger for the spiritual. That's why Jesus said, it's the flesh prophet, nothing. These words are speaking to you, their spirit and their life. What he's saying to us, we got to seek after the spirit. We must seek after him. I know, I know, I know. You say, well, Jesus was present with them, but I remember scripture Jesus said in John somewhere, uh, I think John 20, when one of the disciples said, Lord, I'm not going to believe it's you unless I can put my hand in your side. And, and it might have been Thomas. And he said, Jesus said, Thomas, uh, blessed you believe, but blessed are those who have not seen me, but yet believe. I haven't seen him, but I believe. Hallelujah. And, and when I believe, he endowed me with the power of his Holy Spirit. You see, you, if you want to be filled with the Spirit, just believe. Just believe, just believe, just believe. That's why, that's why I think when Paul writes to the church in Galatians chapter 3 verse 14, you can read it when you get home. You're talking about the, the, the promise of Abraham coming on the Gentile. All of us are Gentiles. We are non-Jewish. The Old Testament used to call us heathens. And this ain't Fred Sanford show. The 
Old Testament called us heathens. But the Bible says through faith, the spirit of, of that the Holy Spirit comes on the Gentiles through faith. When you want you want endowed from God, you got to believe what God says. The Bible said He called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. The Bible said you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not believe. He made you more than a conqueror through him that loves you. The scripture said, I've set my love upon you. Hallelujah. Ain't that wonderful that you can do all kind of stuff that we've done, yet he still loves you? And you got the nerve to catch an attitude? Somebody ought to break out in a 10-second praise and tell God, thank you for loving me. In the midst of my mess, he still loved me. In the midst of my situation, he still loved me because I'm your bread. In the midst of a bad decision, he still loved me. I went down the wrong road, but he still loved me. I should have died in a situation, but he still loved me. I should have gave up on life, but he still loved me. I still, I still did a lot of other things after he loved me, but he set his love on me. Because I'm your bread of life. I feel the hungriness. I feel the emptiness. Then Jesus said unto them, I am the true bread. Hallelujah. He said, if you're going to eat the true bread, I'm the true bread. If you're going to eat me, you got to eat my doctrine. You got to eat my teaching. You got to love you one another as I love you. Hallelujah. He said that's what he's trying to tell us. He's trying to show us what true love is. True love ain't about huggy, huggy, and kissy, kissy. Because a whole lot of folk in trouble today thinking that was true love. <laughs> but true love gets you through problems. <laughs> true love gets you through hardships. <laughs> true love don't bone itself. <laughs> true love don't backstab. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. <laughs> true love don't envy and get jealous over you. <laughs> but true love will walk through you through the storm. <laughs> true love will be there when you're rocking. <laughs> and you can't figure out how to make it. <laughs> true love will show up. <laughs> Sometime and true love will show up. In a, in, a, in a place with somebody you least expected. The problem with most of us, we're looking for certain people to show up. But my brothers and my sisters, when God is your bread of life, don't be surprised who he used to bless you. Don't be upset about it. You got to learn how to thank God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh God, let me calm down. Sometimes you got to know how to thank God for the small things because it's the small things in life that sometimes God uses to bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Sometimes we get angry at a car that cuts us off in traffic but don't realize that car cut you off to save you from an accident that was about to happen in front of you. You don't know. Sometimes, you know, I'm coming down the interstate 20 many days and yes, folk be flying up behind me, flying past me and after a while one of them big trucks, they get slowing down. I said, what the world going on? But as I come around the bend, there's a trooper sitting there. I said, thank Thank you, Jesus. Because if it wasn't for that, I might have been the one he pulled over. See, sometimes God used small things to deliver you. We keep looking for the big things. But I come to tell you, when God is your source, you got to know how to trust him no matter what you're going through. That's why the songwriter said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Lord, can I preach you for about five minutes? He said, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. How many in here today need God? You need a word from the Lord. Lord, if you don't speak, I'm going to say the wrong thing. If you don't direct my path, God, I'm going to go the wrong direction. Because I'm like David, Lord. I'm right at the edge of telling somebody off. I'm right at the edge. My mind is just about God. And if you don't keep me, because I realize you my source you my bread you my strength God I'm about
about to flip. I wish I had a few more folk in here. Well, get off your high attitude and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I almost slapped somebody. Uh-huh. I almost uh, I wasn't talking about physically some of y'all slap people in your mind uh-huh. you slap them with your attitude you slap them with the wrong word but because God was your source he reminded you I'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on me I almost lost it but God kept me because he's my source He's my bread. When I was hungry, he filled me up. When I was thirsty, he quenched my thirst. He's my water when I'm thirsty. And the body cannot get a witness here. I wish I had about 10 more folk. Or jump on your feet real quick. And tell God, thank you for being my source. Hallelujah. And just sit back down. Tell him thank you. He's been good to me. I almost let go. I was right at the edge of a breakthrough. But I couldn't see. The devil thought he had me. But Jesus came and and he helped me close so I wouldn't let go that's what the table means that's what communion is all about when you take communion you're serving God I'm in a relationship with you you my lover I ain't gonna let nobody break this relationship they can go and come but I found out you the same yesterday today and forever you immutable you un changeable that's who you are you my foundation that's who you are you my provider yes you are oh God you my battle axe in the time of battle that's who you are you everything to me everything he's everything to me is he your everything come on praise him is he your everything yeah he's joy in the midst of your sorrow yeah He's your bread. He's your source. He's necessary. That's what it means. He said, if you're going to make it to heaven, he said, I'm necessary. That's what he's saying to us. You can't get there without the necessary food. He's saying, if you're going to make it out of this world, you're going to make it to the next life. He's saying, I'm necessary. That's why he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man come to the Father except by me. That's what communion represents. We're taking on him, our relationship with him. Don't take it if you ain't got no relationship. Get one. All it takes is faith. The Bible said he's not thee, even in thy mouth. Thou confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. God has raised him from the dead. He said, I shall be saved. Hallelujah. You can't stop there. Philip asked the eunuch, do you believe? He said, Lord, I believe. He said, here's water. What hindered me from being baptized? Philip took him down in water and baptized him in Jesus' name. He just baptized into Christ. Have therefore put on Christ. Hallelujah. Putting on suits and robes don't make us save. You got to have a relationship with the Lord. The Lord is soon to come. He's coming. You don't believe me? Look around. Hallelujah. I can tell you more. Hallelujah. But I won't. Come on, stand. Young people, quit playing with your soul. Quit playing with your soul. You ain't got but one life, one soul. No man can save his own soul. 
Hallelujah. God didn't give man that power. Oh, that's his. That's why he said, he that cometh to me, I know why I cast him out. Hallelujah. No matter what the situation, he said, I'm with you. Even to the end. Hallelujah. The eternal life is in Jesus Christ. That's what, he, that's what this is about. Ain't about just drinking some juice and some waffles. This represents the body and the blood of the Lord. The Bible says through his blood, through the eternal spirit, he purged our conscience from dead works to serving the living God. He's our source. He's the bread. He's the one that quits the hunger. No matter what you do in life, no matter what, how much you accomplish in this world, and for one thing, there's one place in man only God can fill. He created us that way. And that's in your soul. Hallelujah. Let God satisfy you. We used to sing a song years ago, I'm satisfied. Oh, praise his name. He rescued me from sin and shame. My wonders are over and my doubtings have passed. Praise God. I'm satisfied. Satisfied, last. Anybody satisfied? Are you satisfied? Bless him like you're satisfied. Bless him like you're satisfied. Hallelujah. I'm satisfied being saved. I'm saved by the power divine. Saved the new life sublime. Right now, I'm free and my joy is complete because I'm saved. Saved. Thank God I'm saved. Wave at somebody. Don't do it because I tell you. Do it because you know it. Tell them I'm saved. And I'm satisfied. Woo, glory. I'm saved and I'm satisfied. I ain't going nowhere. Hallelujah. I'm sticking. I'm going through. Hallelujah. I don't know your situation. But if you need prayer, come on. The pastor, I did a closer walk with him. Hallelujah. I need a closer walk. Hallelujah. I just need, I just need to be at the altar, Lord. I don't want nothing between me and him as we break bread this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He don't love you because you get good. The Bible said, while we was yet sinners, he died for us. That's what I love about him. He loved me, but I didn't love myself. If there's another, I feel it in my spirit. Come on. Come on. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. If any time you need to ask the Lord for forgiveness, this is now. Hallelujah. Paul said, don't eat it unworthily. You eat a damnation condemning oneself. We can't judge you. Nobody can judge you. Only God knows our heart. He knows your, whether you've got a relationship with him. If I were you, I wouldn't wait another moment. Tomorrow ain't promised. Today is the day of salvation. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Hallelujah. Those at the altar, lift those hands. Those who are just standing in your seat, lift your hands. It's a sign of God. I surrender my all to you. I give my heart to you. I give my soul to you. I give my whole body to you, Lord. As a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto you, which is my reasonable service. I say thank you, Lord, because you're my bread. You're my source. You're my necessity of life. So I say thank you, sir. Heal, deliver, and set free. Strengthen the soul that came. You know their hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. 
Amen. I'm saved. Oh, yes. Through new life, sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved. 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 Mm -hmm. I'm saved. My joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. Oh, I'm saved. 